And welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby. And today we continue on with St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his first letter to the Corinthians. And today we'll be looking at chapter 3, verses 1 through 23. That's all of chapter 3. And in it, Paul addresses the divisions that exist within the church and the jealousies and frictions which occur because of those divisions. But before we go to our study for today. I want to remind you that if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel and look at all the resources in our playlist library. There's some very good stuff there. And if you're watching on uh, Facebook, make sure you share with your friends and your families these Bible studies. Well, let's go on and start with our prayer. And today our prayer is taken from Psalm 25, verses 4 through 10. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Make me know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast, love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. The Word of God. Alrighty, chapter 3, 1 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants, through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each, I planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the growth, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God, God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, God's building. According to the grace of God given to me like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, the foundation of our faith. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire, judgment. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are the temple. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. 
for it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, Peter, or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. The Word of God. Well, what does that all mean to us? Well, in verses 1 through 3, he's, he's drawing the, the contrast between being of the flesh, being of the world, and you know that Jesus continually told us to shun the world, put the world aside, become more spiritual, become more godly, become more holy. And that's what he's telling us in verses 1 through 3, that he's drawing that contrast between being of the flesh and being of the world, of being spiritual. And these people were not ready to be spiritual. They were not ready to leave the world behind. They were not ready to taste the fullness of the faith of Christ, faith in Christ. You know, Paul says, he, he fed them with milk and not solid food. He gave them the, the bare rudiments of the faith. He instructed them in the simplest terms of the faith because they weren't ready for more, more in-depth, more sophisticated learning. Should our faith be simple? Well, as my friend Tom said, can't we keep this just simple? And yes, we can. But there's always more to be learned, more to be learned, more to be strived for. And the more we learn, the more we can do. So, and he tells them, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh? Now, how many in our churches, in our communities, in our families, how, how many of us live in an air of jealousy and, and constant strife and, what is the word I put down here? Friction. Friction within our families, within our communities, and within, even within our churches. That's being of the flesh. Not the spiritual kind of life that Paul teaches and that Christ wants. Put aside I had this for the right for the beginning of my notes, but I want to bring it up now because it works in really well. Um, St. Peter, in his first uh, letter to the church, uh, tells us to explain our faith with gentleness and respect. Gentleness and respect when we explain our faith. But that should also, that should also be a guideline to all our interactions with people, with our neighbors gentleness and respect and all too often we forget to do that we forget to do that and that's living when we forget to do that that's living in a fleshly type of life so he goes on what is Apollos and what is Paul well they're just servants servants of God they both have the same goal they both have different ministries Paul plants the seed Apollos comes along, he waters it, he nurtures that seed so it can grow. And God provides the growth. The Holy Spirit provides that growth that brings each one of us closer to him. But Paul and Apollos and Cephas, Cephas excuse me, Peter, they all have a different ministry, a different function in this overall plan. Okay? We don't follow Paul, we don't follow... Apollos, we don't follow whoever. No. We look to Christ. We stay centered on Jesus Christ. All these servants of his are there merely to provide functions for us to become closer to him. All righty. Ah, and he goes on. You know, the work that we do will be tested. And in the end day... He uses the word day here. Each one's work will become manifest for the day, the judgment day. We'll disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. That means it will be tested. What, you have, what we have accomplished, what, our servant, what the servants of Christ, what servants of God have accomplished, will be tested. Okay? 
And if any one's work uh, is, is good, well, he'll receive a reward for it. But if it's not up to standard, if anyone's work is burned up through the testing, he will suffer loss. But, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire being tested. Now, we're referred to Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 2. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Isaiah. Ezekiel, Lamentations, Isaiah, 43.2. And I'm almost there, folks. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes, and honored, and I love you. Amen. So, let me check my notes. I don't want to forget anything here. Oh, verses 18 through 23. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, wise in the world, let him become a fool. That is, if you're, so, if you're full of pride, full of yourself, become humble. Become humble. In our psalm today, in Psalm 25, we, we prayed for humility. And we said, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. Those who are steeped in their own pride, they can't learn. They don't learn. It's only through humility when you know you don't know, and you know what you don't know is when you are really ready to learn. So, for the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, and they are futile. Let no, no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God. Amen. Well, tomorrow we're going to be talking about ministries. So you can read up on chapter 4, 1 Corinthians, to be prepared. So have your Bibles ready tomorrow. May God bless us all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.